I just announced widescreen mode and I wanted to show you all what that looks like and walk through some of the controls. So let's take a, a quick look because this is a this is I think the update that makes Breezy GNOME like a really viable productivity solution that you can actually work with on a daily basis. So if you've used the uh, original release of Breezy, normally you would have just a, a single display, just a 1080p monitor. 16 by 9 in the center of your vision here. What widescreen adds is it adds this ultra wide monitor and right now I've got it on curved mode. Let's take a look at the controls that I've added. I've reorganized this UI a little bit. Uh, you can see the three tabs down here, some general settings. We've still got keyboard short, shortcuts and then I've added some advanced settings. We'll get into those a little bit. You can see my display right now is curved. I found with widescreen that that was really necessary, so I added that option. You can see if I turn that off, I've got a big flat display. And especially if you're working somewhere where you need to be able to read text, it's almost, it, it's really inconvenient. So I added the curved display, which brings those corners in closer and really makes it usable. And what this curved display, what this widescreen display is, is actually two 1080p it's a double wide monitor, but it's actually one single one single monitor. So that comes into play a little bit when you want to do full screen. If it was if it was two displays, full screen would be a little bit more convenient because a full screen app would only take up a single a single display. And so for something like, you know, if you're watching a video and you full screen it, this becomes a little bit inconvenient because it actually takes up, as you can see, the full display. There's a couple ways you can work around that until I actually get true multi-screen support. Um, for YouTube I found that sometimes there's an option to pop out the video player and if you do that you can then snap it to the half of the screen like I have the browser here and and then it'll be a, a video that takes up a full half of the screen. If you're playing a, a video game or something like that, you could launch it in windowed mode and that would allow you to, to avoid the, the full screen, avoid it taking up the entire display. So this is what it looks like. The, uh, the controls around, um, around zoom are still there. And um, one interesting thing about widescreen is that um, it, it actually is utilizing SBS side-by-side -side mode on your glasses. So when I move the depth here, when I move the distance, it's actually, you can't see it in the video, but because it's using different images in the left and right lens, this is actually truly moving away from me. So um, if I go back to the breezy controls here, you can see I actually like to use a really close display distance and that makes that brings the monitor in closer to me and actually feels as close as these real monitors that you can see behind behind it um, and then and then when I toggle it you can see it moves the distance so I added a new display size slider here because normally when you pull the distance in the screen gets larger so you know normally this is only at half so normally it would, this would be at one, it would be a massive display. So I set this at the smallest display size and that way when I pull it in close it's it's not too big. And then when I toggle the distance I'm toggling between two very small values there. So those are the new controls here. Let's go quickly through some advanced settings. I've added three new things here in the advanced settings. The first is the optimal display config. I found that GNOME gets a little confused because the glasses, when you switch into SBS mode, they become a, a double widescreen monitor. And GNOME tries to save your display preferences, but it does a poor job when you're switching the same monitor between two different resolutions. And I found that it messes with the scaling and tries to really zoom in the display and it can be kind of disorienting and inconvenient every time you switch into SBS mode to have to go into your display settings and reconfigure it. So this will choose the highest resolution, the lowest scale, the highest refresh rate. Uh, if you don't like it, you can turn that off and then it'll you'll, you'll have to just fuss with the display settings every time you turn it on. 
The second option is always the primary display. You'll notice here I have this uh, bar that shows the the date time, allows me to switch between applications, allows me to power off and do these other controls. This is the primary display. Um, normally when I plug in my glasses, my native display will be my primary. So this makes it so that when you plug in and you enable Breezy, it will always make your glasses display the primary. You can turn that off if you don't like it. And then the last one uh, for users of Deki, you might, this might look familiar, is the movement look ahead. So there's a bit of a delay between the time that the glasses give me their position data and I'm able to render it. And, and if I don't do something to compensate for that input lag, then, then when you move your head, it won't be a smooth experience. The screen will kind of appear to, um, to drag behind your movements a little bit. So I use uh, something that I call movement look ahead to kind of predict where the screen should be based on the, the slightly old data I have. And that prediction can be a little bit off sometimes. So you can, you know, if you find that the screen isn't perfectly sticking when you move your head, then you can play around with this. Just note that a higher value makes it much more sensitive. So now you can see it's sort of amplifying my movements and any vibrations. And as I'm talking right now, it's actually causing the screen to, to shake a little bit. So usually the default will be good. I'd recommend sticking with the default as much as possible. But if it's really bad for you for some reason, it might be kind of hardware dependent, then, you know, play around with that. The last thing I wanted to talk about that I haven't talked about before is that Breezy Gnome is not always going to be free. It comes with two free trial months, and then after that I have a payment structure that has monthly, yearly, and lifetime values that you can, you can choose for your payment options. Um, do note that I am offering it free for certain groups like students, uh, military, U.S. military service members, um, people with financial hardship, and anyone in sort of war zones or, or other crisis zones. So. You know, basically, I want this to be available for everyone. Um, so if for some reason you can't make these payments, I tried to make it small enough that most people, this should be accessible. But um, basically, just reach out to me, and um, and I'll try to make it work for you. I'm, I'm really just trying to encourage people to, to help support me since I am doing this full time, and, uh, and also just get in the habit of supporting open source. So if for some reason you can't do that, just reach out to me and we'll make it work. One other thing I wanted to note is if you did pay for the um, the gaming supporter tier, like on Steam Deck, um, any funds you, you put in towards that will, will go towards um, Breezy Gnome, the desktop. So, you know, if you pay $10, then you'll get two months uh, for, for, the, for Breezy Gnome. So that's it. Um, try it out. It's still, you know, it's it's in an early beta right now, so there will be some instability. Um, I do recommend that you're on uh, more modern hardware. You know, something within the last five years should be able to run this pretty well. You might notice some flickering, especially if you're playing video. This uh, this should work pretty well on on any modern machines. So try it out. Let me know how it goes, and thanks a lot.